There is a really great way to rank really fast on Google. We're gonna show you exactly how we were able to take an article on a fairly new website and within three weeks rank number one. And rather than bury the lead, I'm just gonna tell you, it's by winning Google snippets. So targeting the Google snippet can really help you rise to the top even faster because a lot of people are targeting like search queries or specific terms, but they might not necessarily be writing a perfect two to three uh, sentence answer that answers exactly what people are looking for. Google's using these rich snippets all the time to try to provide people a really good search experience and provide them with their quick answer. And a lot of people worry that okay, but if I write a really good short answer and then Google uses it as the rich snippet, does that mean nobody will click on my article because their answer was already given? The answer to that is really no. I mean, okay, that's true if somebody Googles like, what is the temperature in Star Idaho? <laughs> okay, they're gonna get the answer and that's, yeah. that's the whole question mm -hmm. being answered. But most of the time, I mean, never are we gonna write that kind of content. We're gonna write the kind of content where the answer really needs more than two or three sentences. And so we're gonna give a really great upfront answer, but it's also gonna let the person know there's more to this and you're probably gonna to wanna to keep reading. Another thing to keep in mind, by the way, is if the rich snippet is gonna make it so no one clicks on your article, it's probably gonna also make it so no one clicks on any of the articles below. So not winning the snippet to maintain one of those spots below doesn't actually help you at all. <laughs> anyway, so what we want to do is try to take advantage of this opportunity. One of our sites, cookforfolks.com, at the time that it was about six months old, we wrote a brand new article on it, published it, and within three weeks, and I say within because mm -hmm. we weren't checking on it every day, we all of a sudden noticed, oh, it already won the snippet. Mm -hmm. On a six month old website, this is content that normally, at this point, you're gonna be waiting six to eight months for this content mm -hmm. to rank, three weeks number one on Google. And as we looked into it, we saw we were winning a bunch of other snippets too. And we were this close to making this video for you back then. And then something really weird happened. It disappeared. And so did a bunch of others. And we weren't hearing much chatter about this kind of thing happening. And it was really, really odd. But as time has passed, we've seen it more and more. In November, a bunch of other sites said, oh, I just lost a whole bunch of featured snippets. I've been through this with a lot of people. We've been looking at it, mm -hmm. and what we figure is the strategy that we've been teaching to win Google Snippets, that same strategy is being used by a lot of people mm -hmm. who are not writing high quality content. They're writing trash content, they're just getting it out there, and then they're taking the time to write a couple of, we call them answer targets. These are just answers that are directly, specifically meant for Google to be able to use it as a snippet. And by relying on that entirely, they're jumping to the top and then Google's recognizing that this is not high quality mm -hmm. content. We don't want to feature this. And so they're looking for some of these signals, um, some of the things that those people are doing, and then they've said, okay, well, we're not going to use that type of content as a featured snippet for now. I think what happened is Google overshot. Mm -hmm. And now as Google gets that dialed back in, what we're seeing is on our sites, snippets coming back. We're winning them over and over and over again. And brand new content today, once again, is starting to win snippets. We got a whole bunch of examples to show you, but we want to teach you a little bit more, some really, really good tactics to help ensure that you win the snippet. Let's talk about some of the results of this uh, particular experience. So for that baked beans article, we did lose the snippet, but we actually didn't lose traffic. We monitored that you know, over the coming months after that happened and we actually are ranking very high. So people are still coming to our article even though we did lose that snippet, um, but it really didn't change much as far as the performance of the article. And that was the cool thing is it was like, we won the snippet, it got us mm -hmm. right to the top quick, but then since people clicked on the article, mm -hmm. they read the article, Google saw those really positive like mm -hmm. signals that it's good content, then when the snippet went away, we stayed right there. Mm -hmm. So oftentimes there's like snippet, people also ask, and then mm -hmm. search results we were number one below mm -hmm. the people also ask. And there was no snippet for a long time on that article or, or that search query and many others. I just thought that was a really neat thing mm -hmm. that when we write quality content, the snippet can help get us to the front of the line. Mm -hmm. But then that content that was still brand new, 
stayed right there at the top. Yeah. Ricky mentioned earlier, you know, people think, oh, if you don't have the snippet, you're not going to get as much traffic. But I know for me as a reader, I actually click through the first couple articles normally, yeah. especially when I'm looking for something really specific. And, and maybe that snippet doesn't quite answer it, or maybe that first article doesn't quite answer it. So even if you're second or third, you could get potential to have quite a bit of traffic. Definitely. So here's the goal with our snippet optimization strategy. Step one, we write high quality mm -hmm. content that deserves to rank number one. First and foremost, we can't skip that and just rely on, okay, but I'm gonna win a snippet mm -hmm. because I'm gonna write really good answer targets. Then number two, we write some really good answer targets <laughs> within the content that just fit the type of content. We're gonna talk about some specific types and show some examples in a minute. And then number three is if we drop from the snippet, it doesn't matter mm -hmm. because what's happened is the snippet like skipped the line for us. It helped us reach the top of Google search way faster than we probably would have otherwise. But once we're there, losing the snippet doesn't mean mm -hmm. losing ranking. We often stay right there near the very top of page one. Okay, so let's show you a couple examples of snippets that we have right now uh, that are doing really well. So this one, for example, is how to keep hot chocolate warm outside. And of course you can see it's it's right there at the top. Yep, it it's grabs gotta... the image, which is cool because I mean, they often will do that in other search results, but for the snippet, I mean, it just draws extra attention, but also it, it grabs some data here too from the article. It shows you literally what you can do to keep hot chocolate warm. So you can put it in an igloo cooler, <laughs> you can do a thermos, you can do a stainless steel double wall thermos, you know, coffee dispenser. Thing, it's, it's all of this is a little bit cut off, right? Yeah. So it's like, okay, let me get the rest of the details. Right. I, I want to click into it. that article and find out more. So next is making soup for a uh, large group, but the actual search term was how many gallons of soup do I need? Uh, so Google is just highlighting a few different words here and making that stand out to the reader, but it still is a snippet. Because we wrote a nice, concise answer, mm -hmm to that question, how to figure out how much soup you're going to need. The next one is how much beef Wellington per person. I was really proud of this article, by the <laughs> way. I thought it was very uh, an interesting search term. And that's exactly what it's titled. So it's it's targeting it right there. But again, yep. it's just um, highlighting a few words so the reader can really get a little bit of a snippet and then yeah, go read the article. Another one here, how much mashed potatoes do you need for 30 people? It's, ga it's grabbing exactly the section of the article that we wrote intended mm -hmm. to be a snippet. And then it's, once again, like the first one, pulling data from a table. Google kind of messed this one up, if I'm honest. Mm -hmm. That article has like five tables in it. Mm -hmm. Most of them are about mashed potatoes. And they pulled the data from the table that was about how much gravy. Oh, no. And so these numbers are wrong. Oh, you have no. to click into the article. Otherwise, you're just going to make the wrong amount of mashed potatoes. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Whoopsie. <laughs> I thought that was funny. I think we went back and put made it very clear we underneath. Did. So we hopefully put, Google yeah, figures that out. Yeah. All right. So the next one is what does olive oil cake taste like? And that's exactly what the article was titled. It's got that little photo there, which yep. looks really nice again and a few different words highlighted there. Another one, how many sugar cookies do you need for a crowd? And so this is just how many sugar cookies per person. Another article that just helps you figure out mm -hmm. how many you're gonna need. Mm -hmm. And this snippet again, there's nothing super special about it to mm -hmm. make it stand out. The cool thing about it is it's right here at the top before the people also ask. It's just a great spot to mm -hmm. be in. Um, <laughs> but again, even if we lost this spot and we landed right here, I, our traffic would not take a substantial mm -hmm. hit. Uh, which is which is what's really cool, even if you lose that snippet. Mm -hmm. There are a few things that we want to share with you about how to help ensure that your content can get there. Some of the things we've taught before when we write like an answer paragraph, two or three sentences, that will will bold that, right? Because what that does is not only make it stand out to a human reader, mm -hmm. but it also helps just that little tag, that strong tag, um, helps Google identify that this is important content. That's fine to keep doing, that's fine to not do. Uh, we found that it's less important now. Google's getting better at identifying um, that type of information, whether or not it's, in a, it's bolded. However, what we did find is that it's really important still to make sure you tee up that answer target. So let me give you an example here. The mashed potato article. The mashed article. potato article. <laughs> what I found when I went back to read through here, mashed potatoes are an easy to make side dish. It's loved by all. However, because mashed potatoes are so well loved, making enough for a large group gets complicated. When catering to large groups, plan on each person eating about half a pound. This would be more helpful um, and would be more likely, we still want to snip it for it, but it'd be more likely to win if 
Um, if I were to tee it up by saying something like, figuring out exactly how much to make can be complicated. Here's how. We tee it up to make it really obvious to Google. Now here, that's maybe less important because we, I mean, when catering to large groups, plan on each person, mm -hmm. maybe it's kind of obvious, mm -hmm. but we just want to help. Make sure there are no questions with exactly. Google. Okay, so the next one that you want to make sure you're doing when you're using tables is making sure that you are making very obvious to Google what is in the table. For example, this table is talking about the amount of baked beans needed for uh, different groups of or amounts of people. And underneath, we want to make sure and put a description here. So it says, this table shows how many cans of baked beans you need for different size groups for three different sizes of cans. So it's pretty specific. Like as describing specific what's as possible. in the table. Yeah. This wasn't there before, and this just looks like normal text, but it's actually a caption for the table. Um, so the way it's formatted on my site doesn't matter so much. The fact is that Google can see that that's a caption that goes with this mm -hmm. table because of the way that the code looks. But the other thing that we did was these columns across the top, the, the titles of each one. At first, it just had like a hashtag for number, mm -hmm. just to try to keep it short, right? Number of people, instead of having it be long here. However, the hashtag and the number sign, it's two different meanings, right? Yeah. So let's make it obvious to Google. Amount of baked beans needed, parentheses, cups. Okay, just make it really obvious, both to a reader mm -hmm. as well as to the search engine, exactly what the data in this column is. So the next thing to remember is when you're making list posts, you wanna make sure and use each number and title as a subheading. So make it a subheading instead of just listing them all out in the very beginning and giving away that information. Make it, you know, number one, so and so and make it bolded like a subheading and uh, that way as you do that throughout the article google can um, see that and pick that out and possibly use it as a snippet yeah we found that google for a long time now has been smart enough algorithmically to take those subheadings and turn that into a mm -hmm. list and so what we want to do is just make that as easy on them as possible if we write a how-to blog post it's like seven steps i'm going to write step one and then write out what that step is and that is a subheading mm -hmm. And then I'll go in and give the more descriptive information about it. The next subheading is step two and so on. If it's a list post, 10 great vacation destinations in wherever, Alaska, I'm going to have one period. I don't care if you use a period or not, but one. Anchorage. And then, <laughs> and then yeah, Anchorage. And, and then two and, and just go on and on and on. And, but we're going to number those. And then it's going to make it really obvious to Google. This is the list that they're giving. And then what Google will often do is actually take that list, condense it, and make that the snippet. It's a great way to win that snippet. It's also a great way to make sure that your list is very, very easy for readers to follow. The key takeaway here is really twofold. Number one, in creating these answer targets, we wanna make sure that we're making this really useful and easy for readers. We, we don't want to go so far to try to optimize for a computer that the reader suffers. And so by, you know, having a nice, clear, bolded paragraph that answers the question near the beginning of the article, that's really helpful for a reader. Numbering our list of steps is really helpful for a reader, but it's also really helpful for a computer. If we can make it really obvious to the algorithm what each of these things is, the algorithm can have a much easier time identifying that as a potential snippet, and that'll shoot you to the front of the line much more quickly. So make it easy for the computer, make it easy for the reader, <laughs> and you're gonna be able to win a lot more snippets.